Gamers, it is time we push back against the Meta Menace. I am sick and tired of seeing everyone running around with 40k HP and thinking that they're safe, okay? No longer, alright? We 20k HP builds will rise up and destroy everyone that has 40k HP, okay? And you will join me, and I will give you the tools to do this, okay? But before we get started, there are timestamps in the description of this video if you'd like to skip ahead to any point in this video, or you just want to come back and make this build for yourself so you can also destroy 40k HP people, okay? So, let's get started. It's been over a year since I've last updated this build. Daggum, this is Generation 4 of the One-Shot Stamina Nightblade Bow and Arrow build. This build spec has been on my channel forever, and I'm very, very excited to be presenting Generation 4 to you guys, because Generation 4 of this spec is by far the strongest spec to date of this type of build. Uh, it kills things the fastest it's ever killed, okay? That does come at a price of being at 20k HP and also having zero survivability built into the build. I say that, but we have such high values that our healing is kind of insane. And the resiliency of this build has surprised me on countless occasions. So I can't say it's not like the most forgiving spec in the world, but it is very difficult to survive on this build if you don't know what you're doing and you're not paying attention. Because you need to be reading people and making sure that you're doing your best to avoid combos that are coming your way. Because if someone gets a really good combo off on you, it's lights out. You're gonna die okay so that is why i'm gonna give it a two out of five stars for its approachability rating like i said the tooltip values on this build are really high so um as long as you keep your buffs up and your heals up and you don't get caught out of stealth in a place you don't want to be you should be just fine survivability wise sustain is difficult it's a gank build we don't have any sustain hardly you'll just be standing around waiting for your resources to come back that's just a part of the play style but we have enough damage to kill just about anyone in this game um especially if um, everything crits. Everything crits, uh, it, it, they're gone, okay? I've, I've killed people with 50k HP with this build, okay? It's incredible. And before we move on to the montage, two things. All you goobers in my comments section saying that, oh, this is not a true one-shot build. All right, curb your one-shotism right now, okay? I don't care if he had low health. That is why there are parentheses around one-shot in the title, okay? And second, I have a Discord. Please consider joining it if you want to come goof off with me in real time. Link is in the description. And also, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. I don't know why you wouldn't be subscribed. And I don't know what else I can do to make you subscribed if you're not subscribed by this point. Like, what can I do to convince you to subscribe? I, I, I really don't know. Listen, okay? Maybe you watched a montage. You'll change your mind. Um, I hope you do. And, um, yeah, um, I hope you enjoy the montage. Like the city, but I am tired of the same people, of the same things. I want to escape now to know the place now, but with you, cause I. Yeah, pick on a 22k HP's guy, huh? Yeah, pick on a 22k HP's guy.
LOL! And then my three piece dinner. Alright, I'll take a two piece dinner, that's fine. Taking a look at our attributes, we have no points into magic, no points into health, and all of our points into stamina. This is to push our max stamina as high as it can go so our tooltips can scale up. These are the stats of the front bar unbuffed, these are the stats of the back bar unbuffed, and for those nerds that care, here are the stats of the bars moderately buffed. Now let's take a look at that crit damage real quick. And do note that these numbers get way higher while you're in combat. For our race, we are a cat, obviously, for the passives that we get. Those being Robustness, increasing all of our recoveries. Lunar Blessings, increasing all of our max stats. And Feline Ambush, increasing our critical damage and healing by 12% and making us a Hide and Seek Pro. Okay, this goes very, very well on this build. And I feel like if you really want to maximize the power of this build, you gotta be a cat. Okay, just uh, embrace cat. For our Mundus Stone, we are using the Shadow. This is to push our crit damage as far as it can go, so that way we can hit incredibly hard, and it definitely does that. And uh, no, no other Mundus Stone would work. You have to use the Shadow. We are Vampire Stage 3. We are Vampire Stage 3 primarily for this passive, Undeath, which gives us up to 30% damage mitigation based off of our missing health. But also being at Stage 3 gives us access to Strike from the Shadows, which gives us a lot of damage when we leave Invisibility or Sneak. And we also ignore the movement speed penalty of sneak, and we go into sneak a lot faster, so that way we can uh, we can gank people real real good. Um, vampire is not negotiable on this build, okay? So um. for our consumables, for our food, we are using the lava foot soup and salt rice. This is to bump our max stamina up as far as it will go, and also on top of that, it gives us a lot of stamina recovery, so that way we can consistently be dealing a lot of damage while also having a fat stand pull to do lots and lots of damage. For our potions, we are using the Essence of Health potion or the Tristat potion. Basically, this gives you every single resource when you use it and recoveries for each of them as well. This is very, very handy because our sustain is really, really tough on this build. So you're going to be chugging a lot of these. So make sure you have at least 4,000 of these or something. Listen, and no, we are not using any weapon poisons on this build. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for our gear sets. Listen, if you're just going to put the gear on without knowing how to play the build, you're going to be in a lot of pain, but um, you're going to do what you're going to do, so I can't stop you. For our front bar, we have a Bow of the Fire with a Shock Enchantment. It is sharpened. People are like, why are you ganking with Way of Fire on the front? We're trying to put a lot of damage into a very small window of time, and we get that with Way of Fire. Like, no other proc set can do what Way of Fire does, and how consistent it is as well. So if, like, someone survives the gank or whatever, we have even more pressure we can still constantly be putting on them. For our back bar, we are running the Vegetarian's Great Sword with an Absorb Stamina Enchantment. This is defending. Absorb Stamina should really realistically be weapon damage enchantment, but I'm lazy, and yeah. If you don't know what this does, basically this adds a lot of power to rally, so that way uh, you hit harder and you have a damage proc that you can also get with this. For our head, we have Molakina's Mask, meaning it's medium with a tri-stat enchantment. This is Divines. We have this here for the one piece of weapon and spell damage that it gives to us. Any one piece that has weapon and spell damage on it will work in this place. Um, you don't have to have Molakina. Just for our chest, we have a Curious of the Fire with a Tristat Enchantment. This is reinforced. We have uh, the fire on the chest because the set naturally comes in heavy. So for mid-max purposes and stuff, and since I already had this on me, um, we're doing a Curious of the Fire on the chest. Um, so that way we can get our five piece of the fire. For our shoulders, we have Arm Cops of Order's Wrath, meaning it's medium, with a stamina enchantment. These are divines. Our second set is Order's Wrath. We're using this to push our crit damage as far as we possibly can. This also affects our healings. Listen, we have like 55% crit chance on this build. It's incredible, but we wouldn't have that if we didn't have Order's Wrath on, so that's why it's here to push our crit damage and crit chance all the way to the roof, all right? For our waist, we have a Sash of the Order's Wrath, meaning it's light, with a Tristat Enchantment, it is Divines. For our gloves, we have Bracers of the Order's Wrath, meaning they're medium, with a Magic Enchantment, these are Divines. For our legs, we have Guards of the Order's Wrath, with a Tristat Enchantment, these are well fitted. For our feet, we have Boots of the Order's Wrath, with a Stamina Enchantment, these are Divines. For our neck, we have a Necklace of the Fire, with a Weapon Damage Enchantment, this is infused. For our first ring, we have a Ring of the Fire, with a Weapon Damage Enchantment, this is also infused. For our second ring, we have have the Mark and Ring of Majesty with a weapon damage enchantment. This is swift. We're using Mark in here because we're really pushing a lot of values as far as they can go. And Marking just kind of, you know, squeezes in that free 200 extra weapon and spell damage. And plus it gives us some armor. Normally I'd run something like Wild Hunt, but, you know, people are so tanky now that you need as much damage as you can possibly get. So Marking is what we're using. If you don't have Marking or any One Piece Ring Mythic item that's not Oaken Soul for that fact, um, you could just run a One Piece of the Trainee or something. 
For our skills on our front bar, we are using Crushing Weapon. This imbues our light attacks with a lot of extra damage, and this is our combo starter. People are like, oh, you're using Crushing Weapon again? Yes, I just stopped caring about stealth mechanics being nerfed every single patch. That's why we're using Crushing Weapon again. It definitely gives us really good results, and also it gives us major breach. Um, so our following combo hits even harder. If you don't have access to the Sigic Order skill line, but you still want to run this build, you can always use good old Focused Aim. I like Crushing Weapon because it's much faster than Focused Aim. For our next ability, we have Concealed Weapon. This is here as a bar buffer, so that way uh, we get our free Major Berserk whenever we leave Stealth or our Expedition ends. Also, while it's slotted, we move very fast as well. Um, this is just kind of here to buff everything. For our next ability, we have Impale. This ability is our combo finisher. This is why we kill people, okay? If they fall below 25% health, and I'm going to say that in quotation marks, they get destroyed, okay? I say quotation marks because this ability still has a bug where it does not scale up if the target is under 25% health. Um, they can be at 10%, 5%, and sometimes this won't scale at all, and you'll hit people for like 300 damage, and it's stupid. They need to fix this, but um, when it does land, and they are under 25% health, and it works, um, they, they just don't exist. 24k For our next ability, we have Silver Shards. There's a lot I have to say about this ability, but just know that this ability hits really, 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 really hard, and we have a lot of modifiers to make it hit really, 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 really hard, and I'll explain how all those work together in the combat stuff section. For our next ability, we have Good Old Merciless Resolve. Basically, whenever you do a light attack or heavy attack, you gain stacks, and at five stacks, you fire a spec bow that just destroys anything that it hits. Unless it gets dodged, of course, then it won't uh, do any damage, but listen. This hits incredibly, incredibly, incredibly hard, and you use this if you need to take down a tanky target, or you just use it whenever it's available. For our ultimate ability, we have Incapacitating Strike. This is here, so that way, uh, whenever we do light attacks and stuff, we get our Reeve, so that way we get some resources back. But also, if we are caught in close quarters, or, you know, you really want to hurt somebody, and you want to get up real close to them and do lots and lots and lots of damage, um, yeah, you will use this, because this really does set you up for a nice combo once they're standing on the ground. On our back bar, we have Race Against Time. This is here. Here to give us our minor force and our major expedition this also doubles as a snare removal so that way uh, we can't be rooted all the time and uh, it's a very good buff um you use this a lot before you go into combat so you hit really really hard and you move very very fast very good skill if you don't have this because you don't have the sigic order skill line you always run phantasmal escape but you're not gonna get that major expedition but you can roll on the front bar to get it with your bow but um, you can run this for our next ability we have resolving vigor this is our heal over time we still have resolving vigor here because you are going to need to heal on this build there's going to be times where you just stealth is not really an option so rolling and healing is all you got so uh yeah that's why vigor is here to keep us alive all right for our next ability we are using evil hunter i know this is on the back bar and you're probably gonna have questions about why this is where it is but let's look, look look my friends a little squirrel told me about this okay and uh basically right when you activate this your fighters get abilities do 22 percent more damage all right this plays into our combo and i'll explain how all this stuff works together in the combat stuff section but uh, just know this makes stuff hit incredibly, incredibly hard. Next, we have Rally. This is an incredible ability. Very, very loaded. It gives us damage, recovery, and also a burst heal. And uh, yeah, it also lets us have our Vatran proc. So um, yeah, you need this on the build. Be good. Next, we have Shadowy Disguise, aka Cloak. This makes us go invisible, and our next attack used within three seconds of this is always a critical strike. And while it's slotted, the new change, uh, we just get crit all the time. We get crit chance all the time while this is slotted, so, um, yeah. For our back bar ultimate, we have Soul Tether. This is here as our oh no button, but, um, unfortunately has a 0.5 second cast time, so that means you are probably gonna die when you try and use this, unlike 12 people that are zerking you down. So, um, it works sometimes, but, um, you know, it's really here for insurance purposes, also so that way you can get some extra magic on and make sure you fill out all your passives, okay? And one final note, if you are using Sigic Order abilities, do not fill out the passive Spell Orb, because it will pull you out of stealth. For our champion points in the role player tree, we have... Meticulous Disassembly, Master Gatherer, Flintiful Harvest, and Steed's Blessing. You know, this is like a good passive or something. In the sweaty tree, we have... Fighting Finesse, Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, and untamed aggression. In the potato tree, we have celerity, survival instincts, sustained by suffering, and slippery. And make sure when you're filling out the survivor spite tree, you only put 10 points into mystic tenacity, so that way you can have your recoveries from this and your sustain help from this a little bit longer. And also make sure you fill out all your golden stars, but always be aiming for these slottable passives.
Welcome to the Combat Stuff section. If you have no idea what a Combat Stuff section is, then you're new here, and I would please ask that you subscribe. But second, it is where we go to talk about everything related to how you play this build when you're actually fighting somebody. So that way you don't get dead, and you also know how you can get kills with it, okay? So if that sounds good, um, we need to talk about some stuff, okay? So come on. Before we get started with the rotations and everything else, I want to talk about the mechanics that we're using. We are using the stealth mechanic very heavily on this build, and I'm not talking about when you use cloak and it says you're invisible or whatever. Um, we're actually using crouch to guarantee that we can get our things to go off. We're using crouch not only as a sustain tool, so we don't have to keep dumping all of our magic into cloak. Cloak is for when you cannot sneak because you're detected, okay? Um, but when you can get away with it, you're gonna be crouched, okay? So you literally just crouch, and then when the eye says hidden, um, you're hidden, and that's where you want to be as often as you possibly can be, especially when there's enemies nearby. And how to maintain this is not very difficult. You just make sure that you're behind your target and not in front of them, especially when you go for a combo, okay? We use our crouch to also proc our vampire passive and our veiled strike buff, so that way we can get our major berserk and also our 300 damage. So we're using it for that, and also, you know, just being crouched makes us hidden. So, um, basically we have cloak, but we're not, you know, using cloak. So, I'd advise you to get comfortable with this mechanic, as you use it a whole lot on this build to set yourself up for good combos and stuff. Next, I want to talk about our abilities and how they synergize with our stealth, specifically on Crushing Weapon. Crushing Weapon no longer allows you to cast, like, you cannot cast this thing in stealth anymore. It used to be whenever you cast it, you wouldn't just get detected for whatever reason. Um, we simply get around this by just not caring about how much Zenimax nerfs stealth, so that way we can still continue to gank people with our bow and arrow, okay? So, um, yeah, it's annoying, but, uh, you'll get used to it after a while, and there's a trick that you can use to still get a stun off from stealth using this ability, and it is, when you are going into crouch, you cast your elemental weapon while you're crouching so that way you have it applied to your weapon but it still says you're hidden and i probably shouldn't tell you about this because it's just another thing that zenimax is going to nerf since they watch each and every single one of my nightblade build videos for whatever reason but please put it in the patch notes zenimax if you're going to make this change come on man but yeah we're not really using this a whole lot like because we can't it's it's not really practical to do and it's very very difficult to pull off an actual combat there will be times where it will happen but you really don't want it to happen because when that does happen um they'll just immediately break free and roll dodge and your combo won't land and it's incredibly annoying so i mean it's something that you can do and i'm just bringing it to your guys attention as an option that you have you also don't always have to pre-buff this ability you can you, you can shoot a light attack and then buff your weapon with it and it will still connect but we're pre-buffing with this ability because we want our silver shards and our light attack crushing weapon to all land at the exact same time so we pre-buff and then we light attack and then you'll figure it out in the rotation but i just want to explain those things to you so you know you have options when it comes to how you're using this ability because normally you're gonna light attack use the crushing weapon and then roll dodge if you are caught out of stealth and you're trying to kill somebody um it's a good way to keep pressure on somebody so they have to keep healing so the whole premise of this build is of course it's a gank build but in order to gank nowadays you need to be pushing for a lot of max stats so that way your tooltips scale up a lot higher and that's what we're doing on a build like this and also at the same time we're trying to work in as many things to land at the exact same time as we possibly can so that is why we are ganking with way of fire and our crushing weapon as well as our silver shards and everything else because we're trying to have so many things stack up in such a short amount of time that it's very hard for someone to counter if they don't just roll or block People can full counter this build by just blocking or rolling, but that is why you use stealth to sneak up on them so they don't know that they need to block or roll, okay? And one more thing, um, if you are using the focused aim or the snipe version, um, if player is good enough, they will hear the snipe sound effect go tss, and they will immediately roll. We're back on the, uh, the gank spec again. Um, that's why you don't use snipe right there and dodge the entire thing. And uh, if you do that, right, and you're not, you're, you, they, you, will get, you will get accused of hacking or using some sort of thing. I don't know what this is, but yeah, it's kind of funny. But um, yeah, that is why I'm using, that's another reason why I'm using Crushing Weapon because it's silent. It doesn't make a noise when you go for a gank. So no one knows that they need to be doing something to avoid this combo. So, you know, just another plus something I'd point out. But yeah, that is why we're built the way that we are with our 20k HPs. Now that I've learned you up real, real good about the mechanics that we are using, let's talk about our rotation! Okay, so we have two rotations on this build. One is for specifically ranged ganking, so that way uh, you can hit people from very, very far away.
away and steal their hairlines. The second one is if you're caught in a close quarter situation or, you know, you just want to get a little hands on and murder somebody. That's fine, too. But um, we're going to talk about the ranged ganking first. OK, so starting with our ranged ganking. OK, um, the first thing that you're going to want to do, obviously, is you're going to want to buff up. That's literally just using race against time or rally in whatever order you see fit. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to be on your back bar. You're going to crouch. After you crouch, you're going to cast your cloak. Then you're going to cast your evil hunter. Then you're going to swap bars. You're going to use your crushing weapon. And once your crushing weapon is on your bow, you're going to light attack into silver shards into impale. If you have a spec bow ready, you can replace the silver shards with a spec bow instead and then go into impale. And that should be enough to kill somebody. If it doesn't, you just kind of repeat that over and over and over again until they're dead. For the close quarters rotation, you want to make sure that you have either your end cap or your spec bow ready, preferably both, because when you're that close to somebody, you really can't get a second chance if they survive the gank. So you want to make sure both of those things are available. If they're not, I guess you can get creative and try and make something work, but I'd advise you to save up for a spec bow or an end cap. So that way you can make sure you hit someone extremely hard when you get close to them. We're using a bow and arrow. So when we're close to somebody, we get 5% damage. When we're going for like a range gank, we'll have more crit chance. So, you know, it kind of evens out. But that's why you save your in cap for when you're up close. And obviously you can only use it in melee range. Anyways, for our close quarters rotation, we're not going to be using Evil Hunter. Because we don't want to cast that and have someone turn around and one shot us. So we want to stay in stealth a little bit longer. And most of the time you're going to be using your in cap anyways. So no need to buff your silver shards. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in stealth. We're going to be crouched. We're going to be behind our target. We're going to be chasing after them or we're just going to be like close up to them or whatever. We're going to buff up. We got our race against time and rally in any order. OK, then we're going to switch to our front bar. We're going to crushing weapon. Then we're going to light attack into our in cap. And once our in cap is off, we're going to light attack spec bow. OK, because you should have both of those saved up. If you don't, you can follow up the in cap with a silver shards and then you follow everything up with an impale. And if that's not enough to kill somebody, you just kind of repeat those steps over and over and over again until they are dead. But you also put a lot of roll dodges in there as well. OK, you are going to be caught in situations where where, like that gank is not going to be an option so you're going to have to get creative with how you approach the situation and most of the time I just advise you you have veiled strike on the front so I'd say set someone off balance right save up for a spec bow or an in cap and then medium weave them once they're off balance and then go for one of those two abilities and hit them really really hard so that way they have to play defensive all the while you're rolling and weaving your crushing weapon in and out so that way you can keep some pressure on them but um if you get hit a few times you're probably dead so best thing to do is just kind of disengage and then re-engage but from a distance as for staying alive on this build, you have 20k HP, so you really need to get creative with how you use it. But the best thing I can say is you do lots of parkour, lots of roll dodges, and lots of vigor spam. And like I said, make sure rally is always, always, always active. So that way you not only have your damage buff, but when you need that burst heal, it is ready to go. All right. And you always use soul tether if you absolutely need to. Um, most of the time I kind of hold on to it till I have literally no other option because I don't want to chance the 0 0.5 second cast time getting me killed while I'm being stacked on by like 20 people. So most of the time I just roll and roll and roll and wait till I can uh, get a close quarters combo off with my end cap. But you can still use soul tether if you really want to. Mainly just feel out the situation and know what you need to use so that way uh, you don't die. And yeah. You got to be very creative, though, and you got to be quite quick about what you're doing because you don't really get any second chances on a build like this. So and uh, yeah, um, there's not much else to it. It's pretty simple. Before we wrap up fully, um, there are some extra notes I like to tag in just, to, you know, bonus tips or whatever. Um, you're, this game is not going to work a lot of the time. Your light attacks aren't going to go off when you use crushing weapon for whatever reason. You have the global cooldown available. It just doesn't work. Your in cap is not going to go off. You have to press it six or seven times before it actually connects to the guy. I don't know why that is. Your impale doesn't scale up if they're under 25% HP. And you also just have to deal with lag and poor performance on top of this. The game is not really well optimized and it makes ganking extraordinarily difficult. Especially in the current state where everyone is just stacking 50k HP and is playing a support build. But, um, you know, you have 20k HP. So when you do end up killing them, you can just laugh at them and say, like, I have 20k HP, you need 50 and you still lost. So, And honestly, 20k HP is actually really, really, really strong on not just Nightblade, but like every other class I've tried it on so far. Um... Listen, 30k HP was the cap that we set for ourselves as like the minimum that you should realistically have in PvP, but no one said you can't go under it. You know, put those stats elsewhere and get more damage. 
as long as you get the reflexes to play the game and dodge attacks and block things. I don't think you need 30k HP. I think you get along just fine without it. But then again, there's lag, so yeah. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the combat stuff section. Hopefully uh, I learned you up real, real good, and yeah. Hello you, if you're still here at the end of this video. We're not done yet, um, I just want to talk to you a little bit more. Um, first off, if you're still watching the video by this point, and that means you care, and I am offering you an invitation into our wonderful community. All you gotta do is subscribe and click the bell thing. And if you want to take it a step further, I do have a channel members available if you really want to support me further. You get some cool perks! Um, that allow you to see more of behind the scenes stuff that I do and yeah, it is pretty cool And also shout out to my current channel members and my single patreon supporter. I love you guys so much Dagum, you're making me you know, listen. This, the encouragement is real. All right, and yeah, um If you guys have any questions about this build anything that may have changed or anything you want to know specifically about this build Um, you can either ping me in my discord or you can put it in the comments section And I'll see if I can get back to you about it And I don't know how long this build's got until it's nerfed and it'll be very sad when it does get nerfed, but yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching, and yes, have a good night.